Yeah, that is really sad. It, and also, if you've spoken on this before, everything is child centered. There's not much for yeah. adults to enjoy and, and to experience. So it's it's unfortunate, truly, really, because I think we are the biggest demographic that needs fun <laughs> reinstated into our lives. Thank you. No, truly, you are one hundred percent correct. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ashley. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! <laughs> Happy birthday, Ashley. Hello. That was seriously beautiful, especially the end. Thank you. Happy birthday. Like you just really, <laughs> your vocals. I felt you. like Marilyn Monroe for a moment. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Oh my God. <laughs> Happy That's birthday, your- Ashley. Oh. I love you so, so much. You're so amazing. You're so lovely. You're so wonderful. You're the most fantastic human being on this planet called Earth and any planet in outer space and all the multiverses, you are the best, Ashley. (laughs) Thank you, my friend. Thank you so, so much. (laughs) You're more than welcome. And welcome back, you guys, to the Daily Humans podcast. If you haven't caught on yet, this right here is the most beautiful woman on the planet, Ashley. (laughs) She's she's speechless. And I'm Nina. <laughs> Welcome back. I am. <laughs> and if you didn't know, I'm Ashley. How close we are to episode 10. Mm-hmm. It's amazing when you think about it. Last season, we ended season one on episode 10, if I recall. And to think about how far we've come this year and how easy it's Mm. been to just record and to have a fun time with you ash it's it's incredible and not only is it that but it's your birthday which means we're gonna get down we're gonna party we're gonna celebrate celebration time come on come on (laughs) let's celebrate let's celebrate (laughs) it's all right I love that song. Oh, gosh, I freaking love that song. <clears throat> yeah, me too. Definitely. It's an absolute thrill to be doing this with you, my friend. Yeah. Truly. Every time we're about to record, it gets me very excited. Mm-hmm. I put the effort and time in to just be me and doll the fruit basket up because I'm mm-hmm. like Nina. i got to, like, show up for Nina and for this podcast as well. Yes. It's such a good time. You are so stunning. Like the fact that you just said you get dolled up for not partially me. Um, very much appreciated because every time I see you, you're a vision. Uh, so I am very humbled and honored and I bow down to you today. Queen Wait, Ashley. When you come to Australia, I'm going to oh. like wham open your door and be having a ball gown on and be like, here I am, my friend. <laughs> my gosh i will have the most beautiful of heart attacks just from your beauty like i'm just gonna float I hate, it. I hate it you're like in the morning not too early because i don't do early yeah 11 o'clock oh my goodness like that's that's the life you guys that's the life <laughs> that would be everything i will document every single version of that i don't know if you'll do it every day ash but when you do i'll be there for it i'll be prepared if there's one thing i know about myself is <laughs> and i know it might be hard to believe friends but when i when i do stuff like this i will continue mm. the next day will be a kangaroo costume nice maybe the next day a koala Mm-hmm. maybe the next day you know I don't know a snake just all animal themed of Australian animals yeah. just yeah. and then the next thing will be our next category which who knows I'll just go yeah. absolute ham theme it every Australian day Australian foods Australian foods 
Aquifer. A mud pie? Mm. Imagine, imagine a mud pie? <laughs> Is that what it's oh, called? <laughs> I can't remember. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. No, but actually... <laughs> conversation a couple of days ago in a phone call where she was introducing me to meat pie. It's meat pie. Oh I can goodness. imagine if I served up to you the mud pies that me and my siblings used to make in the backyard. Here you go. I know it's nice and mushy. And it might be kind of muddy, but it's delicious. <laughs> We eat it full heartedly. Like, thank you, Ashley. <laughs> yeah, we Australians, we eat dirt from the backyard. We rub some dirt in it. You know that, that. Rub, you did... rub some dirt in it sentence? We really took that yeah. literal. And we really rub some dirt in it by ingesting it instead. Oh, gosh. I didn't even catch that. I was like, my pie. Hum- and you said it hilarious. twice, too. <laughs> it's okay, because if you asked me about... One of your popular foods over there. Mm-hmm. The only thing I remember is orange cake. Yes. And it's small. That's all yes. I remember. That's all I've got. <laughs> yeah, but Ashley and I were on the phone call a couple of days ago talking about foods from our countries and trying to like let our intuition guess by the names what it would be. Yeah. It was so much fun. And meat pies are one of them. On that day. Yes. Both of our intuitions were just asleep while we were wide awake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah party pies and sausage rolls is what i told her about mm-hmm. a big and it looks- popular staple food for for mm-hmm. parties great staple food amazing mm-hmm. top tier the mud pie <laughs> to our pastry absolutely spectacular <laughs> tastes very earthy <laughs> But it's yeah. it's beautiful, you know. It's not, it's not dirt yeah. or sand. It's just it recalls Mother Nature as it mm-hmm. should have been, as it is in Australia, beautiful exactly. and growing. It's very connection, connect connections. It's very connected right. to the ecosystem of Australia, and that's what it really brings out in the taste of the dish. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. You say it, sister, <laughs> yeah. and just for some extra pizzazz. I reiki it and I oh. incense it. Yes, I remove any of the negative energies and I just, it is now a spiritual pie, spiritual <laughs> mud pie. Spirit mud pie. <laughs> yes, put a crystal in the middle. Bon appetit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love it. Let's put that on a merch T-shirt. Yeah. That'll Picture be our logo for the podcast. The it's just a spiritual mud pie, and like a little um, cupcake holder thingy. So it'll be That's perfect. Cute. With the color of your hat as the cupcake oh. holder. Mm-hmm. And a little the advertisement rose. for that would be easy. Spiritual mud pie. Yes. Allow it to fill your senses. Bring you to the high power of your higher self. Eat it wow. today. Shove your face in it. Rub it all over your face if you need to. Yeah, it's all over. Just like rub them high and pew, and then just rub some dirt in that face. <laughs> it puts puts the the coat of rub rub some That's dirt on it in a whole new light. <laughs> no, <Sensual. laughs> That's so sensual. <laughs> oh, it's a full body it's experience. You know the yes. voice he did in the last episode, the man voice? Mm-hmm. You have to put that like much or like poo, poo, on it. Eat that meat pie. Rub some dirt Eat on that it. Yeah. Eat that meat pie. Rub some dirt on it. That's yeah, how that's... we do it in the country. <laughs> you that's how we do it out here in Texas. <laughs> I'm trying to think of another pickup line to pick you up with that hat and that <laughs> voice. Oh, should I take the hat off? I'm I'm not sure. I feel like I'm looking like a unicorn. <laughs> I love the hat. It's so cute. Okay, I'll keep it on then. I'd wear a hat too, but we we don't you know what the funny thing is no one buys them anymore here. No one mm. really uses them. Yeah. For birthdays or anything. It's yeah. really becoming like a a fad? No. It's like an old traditional birthday thing that's starting mm. to phase out. 
Yeah. Not even for kids. So I'm though, old. Though. That's what you're saying. I'm I'm old. <laughs> I'm just out of date, out of touch with the touch. That's funny. Because I'm pretty sure I just turned 28 <laughs> and you still get to be 27. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay oh, it's i just accept the reality that um nina's technically 80 and i'm and i'm 27 because she said it in the last episode that she feels yeah. 80 yeah so you yeah. 80 yeah, yeah I you am. with my grandma sweater as, as an 80 year old <laughs> oh oh goodness no, but it's the beautiful Ashley's birthday. By the time this episode comes out, uh, a day will have already passed. But our beautiful friend, our beautiful Aries, it's her magical 28th birthday. And it's the most special day on this planet because it's the day you were born. It's the day your soul came to Earth, which was very involuntary for you, Ashley, but a very big blessing for the rest of us who get to experience you. So happy, happy birthday. I wish you truly the most wonderful, wonderful year filled with so much growth, happiness, health, everything that you deserve and want in your life because you are so worthy of it and so deserving of it. You are truly a light in the void that sometimes is life. <laughs> very doom and gloom but you are the light you are the sun and your beauty and your just your soul it really radiates and you bring so much joy and happiness to my life and I know for anybody else listening as well I've gotten so many compliments from like friends listening in where they're like Ashley sounds so amazing her voice is so beautiful and she'll be like if she ever decides to be a mom she'll be like the best mom ever I legit got that comment a couple days ago and so it's just you're beautiful you're wonderful you're stunning and it's, it's hitting you're just magnificent tears are coming to our face so i have done my job well good night everybody thanks for enjoying the episode <laughs> until next <That's> week <laughs> um yes She's crying. She's watering the plants with her tears. You, 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 here's some new fresh water for you. <laughs> that just, that just, yeah. That really got me. Good. It should. It's nice to be. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. It's nice to. It's just nice to be treated like a human. It's nice to be complimented like that. Like it's, yeah. it's really nice. I want to give you a hug so right rare, now. You know, <laughs> it feels so rare to to feel this loved. So thank you, and to mm. everyone else as well who has said those really nice things to Nina. Thank you, especially to hear that I'd be a good mom. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That that's a really big thing for me. Yeah. I want to be a good mom. So and I, yeah. I feel like I will be. So thank you for that. Thank you for helping heal my soul and my my heart. <laughs> you help me heal my heart, my friend. And every yes. time your friend says something nice or anyone does, you help heal my heart. So thank you. That You're was more really than nice. <laughs> You're so sweet. That was really nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, you're so stunning and beautiful, Ashley. Really, truly. And oh my goodness, like you deserve the best that this world has to offer. And I mean that when I say that. Truly. Thank you. You're welcome. Everything I say comes from the heart and I mean it. She says it to me a lot. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> There are moments where she'll um, voice record things to me and especially if I'm in certain places in mind and physical state, she says it and I'm on the end of, on the, end of the phone. Oh, 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 she's so nice. What did I do? That's such kindness. Like, I'll just be absolutely losing my sh Sorry, my crap is. I'd be losing my crappies on the other side of the phone. Knocked me down. 
it's kind of mm-hmm. like you know it's pretty surreal to have someone be so kind so thank you for that you're more <laughs> like, than welcome to me i'm constantly going to be a cryer because it's like these and these are really new newish feelings for me fully absorbing all of this you know, I said to Nina so many times, Nina, I'm sorry. It's just like, I know I'm hearing you say it, but I, I can't take it in yet. I can't absorb it. It just doesn't feel like I'm connected to what you're saying yet. If you remember, I had so many conversations mm-hmm. with you about that. She just kept complimenting. She just kept breaking down that wall and doing it in such a safe, paced manner that gave me time and she heard me and she allowed me to really process and then when it finally hit (laughs) I remember it too because I'd heard one of your voice messages that's what I'm saying I was listening to one of your voice messages and something had just happened that was pretty really bad and Nina was just being such a safe space and I was just absolutely a mess when that happened and she was just like (laughs) She honestly she took me out of the worst mindsets and I, I felt it. Like I felt her words just hit my heart so deeply. And I wasn't just crying because of what was happening. I was crying because it was like, wow, I feel human. I feel amongst being treated, amongst being treated like I'm not a human. I feel human by someone. And that is... That's a lot. It's yeah. overwhelming, but in a good way, in a really yeah. good way. All the mistreatment comes down to a light, and Nina's the light. So none of it matters. It's good to you have people in your life that show you that light. I had to take a minute. We had to pause it for a second because... uh the time that I decide to stop wearing waterproof makeup because I've been told so many times it's really bad for your eyelashes <laughs> is the time that I just bowl my eyes out. It's been <laughs> happening a lot. <laughs> and I, I really, I just, wanted, I just want things to be known here that I don't apologise for it and I hope none of you do too, especially the ones that know what this is like too, to experience kindness and when it really hits really deeply I've told Nina so many times the moment that I start to experience new things I will absolutely be a a pile of like a puddle on the floor I'll just be on the floor in a curled up position you'll just see a puddle it's like did it just rain no honey it was me (laughs) I don't apologize for for crying I don't apologize for feeling because it just it it means it deeply means a lot to me because of what's unfolded in my life. So obviously I feel deeply towards it. So never apologize for that. None of you should apologize for that. And I'm not apologizing for that. I never will. So enjoy the tears for all the future episodes as well. (laughs) You're so right. You're so, you're so, so right. Because you should never have to apologize for feeling things. And I feel like, when you've been in a state of, I I can only speak for myself, but when you've been in a state of constant survival or having to navigate, you know, the, the microaggressions that can come in friendships or with any type of relationships with certain types of people, um, you have to do so much thinking. And then when you're with people who you truly feel safe with, that's when you're allowed to like, let that go and be open and be vulnerable. And with that comes the crying and I've definitely had it. It's part of the healing process. And I'm just every single day and every way, I'm so, so grateful to be your friend, Ashley, and you're incredible. I'm not going to make you cry again, so I'm going to stop, but I'm just... It might happen anyway. Yes, it might. It might. You're right. Um, But earlier when you said, I am the light, I just want you to know that you are that light the things that you see in me are the things that are in you. And um, I'm just a reflection of that. So you are the light, you are the sun, you are the ever like emanating presence of warmth and love. And it is an honor to be your friend, truly. 
<laughs> just need a, a quick second. Hold on. If you ever need somebody at your party, guys, to make somebody cry, just call me. Just call me. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> in a good way, though, she will literally make you. She will make you cry in a good way. She'll make you feel things. Trust me, in a really yeah. good way too. It's like in Santa Claus. I don't know if anyone's seen it. Number three with Frost. Have you seen that mm-hmm. movie? Yeah. She mm-hmm. goes and hugs Frost at the end, and she warms his heart. And that's her ability with hugs. Nina has that with her voice mm-hmm. and her hugs, even though I haven't experienced them yet. I definitely feel like that would be the reality. Yeah. The full experience is there with this one. The force is strong with this one. <laughs> In reference, I turned 28 yesterday, just a little FYI. 28, two more years until 30. I'm actually kind of excited. I feel like 30 is going to be such a refreshing, reviving experience. Don't you feel that too, Nina? I don't know. Something about 30 feels like it's going to be nothing like the 20s because the 20s, the the 20s, the 20s, fudge, fruit basket, flower basket, fudge. I can't swear, so that's my F words. I actually um, came across someone talking about how your 20s is the survival mode and then your 30s is when you start to not care. Mm, yeah. I thought to myself, why is it even like that in the first place? But anyway. When it comes to turning 30, it's funny because <laughs> when I was in my early 20s or even before I got into my 20s, I'm like, I'm going to be so excited when I'm 30. I'm going to be amazing in my 30s. Like I was waiting for it. And now that, you know, I'm going to follow you in the age of 28 uh, in a couple months, in a few months. And now that I'm getting closer to approaching, it's like, oh, there it is. <laughs> right there. I can see her. She's standing right over there. She's in the she's let's in the corner watching you like Yeah, let's just not ignore her. She's <laughs> like, I see you. We're getting closer. Here we go. Are you ready? Um, how do you, you feel, feel it creeping up, don't you? Yeah, I do, definitely. It's like the how scary thing. <laughs> Forty years old. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it feels like, honestly. That's what it feels like. In realism, though, I can joke about all this, but in absolute truth of how I feel, I'm actually okay with it. Mm -hmm. I am really looking forward to unfolding some new realities um, from starting from here onwards. I mean, technically it started at 27, technically, from the feeling of it. But this year has um, some new things have come in, so... Just truly, truly holding on. No, not holding on. I can't do that. We can't do that in spirituality. No, holding on. Just putting things out there and, uh, yeah, seeing where things flow. But there's definitely been some changes in movement mentally, physically. Mm. So really I'm becoming a lot more at peace with ageing. I don't really, I don't want to see it as a death, 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 death. Ja, 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 ja. Detrimental. Um, now, my past life, I didn't speak English. I'm set on that. My <laughs> past life, was not, I was not an English speaker. Nope. Because I seem to struggle with it. <laughs> Detrimental. De- de- I can't say it. Detrimental. Detri- Detri- Detrimental. Detrimental. She's teaching me. Yes. Do you know she's teaching me that? And yet English is not her native language. Did you all well, know that? Kind of well, to be fair, when it comes to German, I'm not as good as English. So I'm not a native German speaker anymore either. Like I'm I'm declassified. <laughs> okay, well, I'm declassified from English. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find out what I spoke in my past life. I'm going to find out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to see it as a, another burden, you know, another thing to be worried and scared about. There's already a lot of things that go through our head. That's definitely something that I don't think should be given energy for. We're going to age. It's going to happen. You know, I would rather go into each year now, more now these days, especially being in a certain place and mindset of healing. Really just 
enjoying the age that I am for that year and the next year and the next year and just not worrying about moving forward too much. Yeah. Yeah. I had um I had someone I know say something like, I'm looking forward to the weekend and that's kind of the thing that you hear a lot, I'm looking forward to the weekend, I'm looking forward to mm -hmm. next year, I'm looking for this year is just already done, I'm looking forward to this, and it's always months in advance, you know, that they're looking forward to, and I think to myself, mm -hmm. but then that comes, and then the year's over, and then we have another year, and another one, another one, and the time just flies by while we're sitting here looking forward to things that are so far out in the future, but even not just that, when we're just wanting things to quickly go by, but then they go by, and then we get to that point, and then I hear mm -hmm. people say things like, look out, it's going to fly past. You'll be 80 years old before you know it. And I'm like, well, we want things to fly past, but then we also say that it's a negative as well. So it's just kind of a contradictory. So yeah. I thought to myself, I take a lot of things as a learning lesson. <laughs> so I thought to myself, how do I view this entire thing myself? How do I view passing, time passing and age? And I'm still progressing. I still have my moments where I say certain yeah. things, but nevertheless, I'm aware and I'm more open to what I'm saying and noticing that I just should really live more in the present, even if it sucks a lot. <laughs> I will find my, my way through being present because I just don't want to turn another age and be absolutely dreading it or thinking that this actually just, this sucks. It's, it's, it's been enough of that. You know, there's been a, there's been enough of that, definitely. And turning 28, that was kind of the thought process I had beforehand where I thought to myself, and I said this to Nina too, I'm like, I'm turning 28. This was like a week ago when I said this to her, I'm like, I'm turning 28 soon and I just, I'm in such a really crappy mindset and I don't want to turn 28 like this. I'm so overturning another age and being in a certain state that is anything but calm peaceful grounded it doesn't always have to be like that but it doesn't always have to be crappy you know you yeah. know <laughs> so I'm just trying to reevaluate all of that really absolutely and I agree you know we strive for certain things to happen and we only keep our eyes on that and in the meantime all this stuff is passing us by and it can be comforting in a way because you know, there can be things that we are trying to like get away from, I guess. I, I don't know if that's the right terminology for it, but the things that we look forward to can pacify the things that we are experiencing that are not feeling so great in the present moment. But at the same time, there's so much time that's passing. And I definitely can, I can speak for myself when I say this, I definitely have noticed it's like, you know, when I was a kid, all I was looking forward to is my 20s and the 20s are almost over now. And it's crazy to think how fast it happened. And sometimes yeah. I still struggle with that as well, where it's like, I'm 28, I'm turning 28. No, 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 no. I still need to, like, especially with everything that happened, um, I'm not going to mention the C word, but because we're, we're going to get flagged. But um definitely with everything that happened in the last couple of years with society and everything that was going on, it kind of stripped us even more of that time. It stripped us even more of our discovery and being out there and doing things for ourselves in our 20s. So I think not just between you and I, Ashley, I think a lot of people were robbed of years that could have been beneficial or a lot happier than what we're experiencing right now. And to be where we're at, though, to be where we're at now is such, it's it's a privilege to think about where we've come from, the things we've been through, the, the experiences we've had to be able to turn 28 is a blessing and a miracle. And I'm so grateful that we are friends, that we are still friends, that we continue to deepen our friendship, that we are both moving throughout this life and making it our own and moving on to the next places or next stages of it and still communicating with each other and talking and being able to rely on each other, you know? So mm. I don't know where I was going with that, but just to say that, but I can definitely <laughs> agree with everything that you said in terms of time passes a lot quicker than we realize, but 
I think we're making the best out of every decision and every moment that we're in, even when we don't want to be in them at times. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We're growing, evolving into a new human. <laughs> we are evolving <laughs> because our frontal lobe came in at 25. So we, yes. but we evolved already, Nina. We're already there. Yes. That's actually a really great thing to consider as well because our frontal lobe is not fully formed. And so in general terms, we are essentially, yes, 25. Um, We are essentially adults now for three years. So we're three-year-olds, three-year-old adults. So We're three-year-olds. Yes, we're three-year-olds. So glad that's over. Oh my gosh. It was everywhere. When it first came out, I was like, if I hear about baby shark, I'm going to do something. Going to go insane. Like, oh, it drove me crazy. And my cousin, my lovely cousin, she could not stop listening to it. Oh my God. And we, I mean, I allowed her and I was just sitting there at times and thinking to myself, my eardrums are on our burst because I'm going to like the pressure from hearing this song. It was everywhere. Yes. But it's so catchy. That's the annoying thing about yeah. it. And Frozen as well. That song drove me insane. Oh my God. Everywhere. A thousand different versions from a billion different singers every single day. <laughs> I'm glad you know? I survived that time. <laughs> yeah. These are the moment. These are the days of our lives that we yeah. just want to forget. <laughs> yes, it was so cute seeing um, kids really enjoy it and really sing it. And it's funny because as kids, we would listen to songs over and over again think that the adults are most likely thinking, my mind is just going <laughs> to switch my mind off because I can't hear this. I can. <laughs> I'm pretty sure for my mum, listening to me play Vanessa Amorossi the amount of times that I did mm. probably drove her mad. Suddenly she'd, you'd hear, suddenly, I bet she was in the kitchen, right? And next minute she'd hear, absolutely everybody, everybody, like just constantly playing. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely that's exactly what happened. And she'd be in the kitchen probably going, oh, oh, oh. ah. Because <laughs> I really overdid it with that album. I don't even know where it is. It probably ran away from me at this point. <laughs> Do you have a song when you were younger that you just played over and over and over again? Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Ariel, that was my that was my song. It still is to this day. Don't let me don't let me start playing that song even that song. <laughs> That's no, but, Thank you. Um, I think it got worse or I hit my peak with repetitive music <laughs> when I was a teen, like a preteen, 12, 13, that age, because I got into the Jonas Brothers and all hats were off. Go. All hats were off. When it's you sad. look me in the eyes, tell me that you love me. Whatever those lyrics are, like that was my <laughs> or year 3000. What a beautiful voice. Oh my gosh. Thank you. So do you. So do you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Such a supportive oh. friend. I'll be on stage just being like, ah ha ha. And she'll be like, yeah. here you go. Break it down. <laughs> yeah, that is a beautiful song to be obsessed with. Yeah. You know what? You should um 100% be in like an aerial musical because you know the song off by heart. You wouldn't need to learn it, Nina. Maybe that's why your child self was listening to it so many times. Yes. You know that? Yes. That's true. I was actually, let me not get into the whole aerial movie live remake stuff because it's <laughs> a whole debate. But um, no, I, aerial was my thing. Aerial, no. 
I just oh. remember Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. That's oh the one. I played that song to insanity. Like, I don't know how my mother lived. <laughs> Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. When she comes over to here. I think that should be one of my costumes. I just burst open the door, boot off the red nose reindeer oh with the full, the full costume on. Yes. I feel like that would be a great alarm clock for you, but technically not because yes. we like eleven a.m. I would be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> She's laying there just sobbing, be like, boot off the red nose reindeer. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, those were those were the days. I definitely can say that, you know, I am very, very grateful. I think about this all the time. I'm very, very grateful throughout the frozen years and the baby shark years. I think right now the craze is Paw Patrol, but I'm very grateful to not have been a parent during that time because I would have, I would have just, oh. <laughs> I, would have been, I would have evaporated. I would have evaporated. <laughs> Oh, Nina, just wait, because even if our time comes, if we decide to have children, there will be something. There will be something. You <laughs> watch. There'll be something. It'll be the remake yeah, of Frozen. Oh, my jeez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> we'll just have to accept it. We'll have to come to some acceptance of it and just be sitting there going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know the lyrics, so of course you do. That's beautiful. <laughs> of course you do. You want to play it for the hundredth time? Okay. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Mummy's just going to go in the bathroom for a minute and if you hear a scream, don't worry. <laughs> I love that. If you hear a scream. <laughs> I'm fine. Don't I'm fine. worry. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It'll Freddy be the live well. remake of Frozen. That'll be it. I can see it now. <laughs> we'll we'll come back oh to this God. episode then. <laughs> Nina, they'll have a live version of that movie by then, probably. Yeah. Yes. And then um all the movies from Disney would have been remade 10 times by mm -hmm. then. So there'll be a new version of um, Cinderella's. Mm -hmm. What's another song from Disney again? Um, what's another song from Disney? I'm thinking all that's coming oh, up right now is Mulan. You know what just came off in my head? Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go. Do, 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 do. Do you know what I'm talking Where's about? That hi -ho. Where's that from? Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. It's off to work we go. Do, 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 do. I know that song, but I don't know the wolves. Ah, okay. It'll yeah. okay. be like a remix okay. version of that. Do, 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 do. Hi ho, hi ho. It's off to work we go. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that will be the remade version. Our kids will be going, yeah. Hi ho, hi ho. It's off to work they go. And I'll be saying hey. it like. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Disney killed it. Yeah, literally. Nina, just to say this this thing about it, you and I as moms, we're going to have to be standing there. Like, just say that was a remix. We'll both have to be jamming mm -hmm. out with them going, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's such a good song. Oh, my God. I'm oh, so excited. Yeah. Hi, ho. Hi, ho. <laughs> Loving this. Um, oh, I'll be calling up, Nina. We need a holiday. These songs are yeah. killing us. Drop the kids off at kindergarten or something. Like we, we need a break. We need mommy time. <laughs> Why do you need mommy time? There's just too much song. There's too much. It's in our heads. Yeah. We need like a, just a whole meditation retreat or something to get grounded mm. again to remove it from our skulls. Oh. It's attached to our skulls at this point. Yes. That's wonderful. I love that. Oh my gosh. That's what we should do. A if it gets too retreat. progressive. Then yes, even the movies. If yes. there's repetitive movies and music, and it's stuck to our brain cells, we'll go to a meditative retreat, and then it'll be like, "Woo, Sarah!" <laughs> Imagine the lyrics, just breathing the lyrics out, and they're leaving your brain. Yeah. That would be a massive. Like, I'll I'll suck up all that air, and then <laughs> let it out. 
feel like I have an air bending skill where I can just blow it out and it whooshes mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. I was just thinking while you were speaking, it's like, this actually came up recently. And this is how deep it goes when you are a kid and you hear music that you really love. Um, Several weeks ago, after we wrapped up filming or recording for the podcast, I went to my room and I opened up the window and I just heard a kid, SpongeBob SquarePants, SpongeBob SquarePants. (laughs) And I'm just like... SpongeBob Square. I love that theme song. Imagine if you started joining into that kid. You're just up there going, "Yes, SpongeBob SquarePants." SpongeBob SquarePants. He would have been like, "I was so happy. I was living for it." That is so cool that you saw a child just singing. SpongeBob. I'm glad SpongeBob is still a thing. Mm-hmm. I never want that character to die out. He's such yeah. a treasure. He's a literal sponge. Yes. Under the sea. He's a literal sponge. Yes. He's so cute. He's got a friend that's a starfish. Mm-hmm. Patrick. Patrick is hilarious. Patrick is iconic. <laughs> He's so funny. He's everything. He's so funny. <laughs> Oh, oh, SpongeBob. <laughs> that was so good. Oh my gosh. Oh, SpongeBob. Oh my gosh. I can't. <laughs> we both need to get together and do something like TV related at some point because, as in our voices, our accents, our impressions, it's top tier. <laughs> we, well, I've got big plans anyway when you come here like yes. Comic Con, Celestial mm. Ball. The full works. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go to Comic Con this year, yeah. but I'm gonna wait mm-hmm. until you come down. Are you gonna dress up? Probably not. Maybe I don't know. It will. Be my, it will be my first one. I feel like I want to yeah. suss out, suss it out okay. first for okay. my first one. Because right. I just this is the thing. I'm gonna be honest. Is that I'm yeah. not a major you know fan of comics and stuff you know Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that I know the characters Mm -hmm. because some of the costumes I've seen from the US I don't know who they are apart from Spider-Man or Batman oh yeah there's a Superman yeah I know I know all them but there are some that I don't but I want to have the experience of it I definitely Mm -hmm. want to have the experience and see just the craftsmanship of so many Mm -hmm. you know what are they called again um Cosplayers, cosplayers cosplayers that dress up the cosplayer community yeah. there's uh, the videos that i see online of their outfits and some spend weeks and thousands of dollars on it major respect i've said that before in an episode but i just have a lot of respect and i want to experience that yeah so that's really yes. that's really probably the main thing yeah that yeah. and the celestial ball or like renaissance mm. fairs things like that absolutely oh, we don't have mm. well not from my knowledge we just don't have a lot of what america has in terms and europe too mm-hmm. in terms of renaissance balls and renaissance mm-hmm. festivals folklore folklore or lord folklore i think folklore, yeah. yeah folklore festivals and i don't i just never hear even when i google it it's not really a thing. And I'm kind mm. of like Australia. Yeah, don't do Halloween. You barely do Christmas. What do you do? What do we do? Because I don't know. <laughs> it, just, it just, it really feels like we're so far behind on the fun land. Yeah. And it's difficult because, you know, I like my fun. Yeah, I like my fun. It feels like we don't have enough of that here. Do you guys have um, like seasonal like festivals and things like that in Australia? Mm. Victoria Market is one I can think of right now. Mm -hmm. That happens during summer. Mm -hmm. And then they also have a winter market as well, which happens during Mm -hmm. winter. But Mm -hmm. it's, how do I explain this? It's a massive market that is truthfully a little overpriced 
Yeah. And very, very busy. Mm. I went there a few years ago before COVID, way before COVID I went, the last time I went, and there was just, well, you'd be lining up for a long time to get food Mm -hmm. and you're kind of only moving in little small steps because Mm. everyone's just around. It's very busy, Nina, very busy. Yeah. So in my head I'm kind of like, "Mm, it's not really, to me it's, it's not worth it. I'd rather go somewhere else, you know, mm-hmm. and spend time somewhere else than there. You'd be waiting in line just for food, you know. Mm-hmm. That's my opinion. Yeah. But that's what I can think of right now. They do carnivals. Like Moomba as well is a carnival that they currently have on right now. It happens in March. That is, yeah. <laughs> you have your theme park rides and you have food and stuff like that um but a lot of it is just it's very expensive like to do one ride you'll pay like 15 to 20 dollars for it what yeah that is yeah. insanity oh my yeah. god Royal Melbourne show as well Royal Melbourne show is very popular here it happens in mm-hmm. September when school holidays come then yeah, you pay for the ticket to get in and then it's I'm like $15 for a, for a ride. Wow. It's like $25 for a show bag with probably a couple of chocolates in it. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's very overpriced and they don't even go gentle. They don't even go gentle on you. Like, you know, they, mm-hmm. they don't even pack the bag. Mm-hmm. No one doesn't like mm-hmm. that anymore. I can say that. Is- that. Yeah, that is really sad. It, and also, if you've spoken on this before, everything is child-centered. There's not much for yes. adults to enjoy and, and to experience. So it's it's unfortunate, truly, really, because I think we are the biggest demographic that needs fun <laughs> reinstated into our lives. Thank you. No, truly, you are 100% correct. I've said this to so many of the adults in my life where they've said things like, um, that's just for kids. That's just like Easter Mm -hmm. and Christmas. That's just for children. I'm like, well, then what do the adults get? Alcohol and clubs, and that's all we do. That's all we do. That's all we're here for as adults. We pay bills, we drink, and we go clubbing, and that's it. Yes. Put that on my tombstone. That's That's beautiful. When aliens come down and say, what do you do on your eventful nights? I'll be like, I drink and I go clubbing and that is it. And then I die. I pay the bills and then I die. And that is it. That's my fun. That's why I'm so yeah. depressed. Yeah. <laughs> I just, no, I swear. I, I literally said to them, is that all we get? That's just it? No, mm. I, re- I refuse. Because honestly, yeah. I don't do the clubbing anymore. And I don't, be, I don't really drink. Yeah, it has to be a very special occasion. The last yeah. time was a while ago actually yeah I'm not much into that anymore I like fun I want more fun give me Luna Park any day and I did that last year for my birthday Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I had a blast I had a massive headache a big headache but it was a blast Mm -hmm. I literally felt my age that day I have to say this I felt my age (laughs) When I was a kid, when I was a kid, Nina and friends, I could go on those rides. And if you're from Melbourne or technically Australia, you'll know that Luna Park gives you unlimited ticket. So you can Mm. pay for an unlimited ticket. And it's a pretty good price. It's a pretty decent price for unlimited. And you can go on the rides as many times as you please. Well, hear that as a child, even as an adult, I still get the same feeling. But as a child, it's like, it's like someone just opened up the pearly white gates and it's like, here you go, unlimited source of fun. Yeah. So I was running back and forth. I remember I'd run back and forth rides over and over and over again. I wouldn't get sick of them. As an adult now, I was a bit slower pace. I slowed <laughs> down to cater for my knees, but I've slowed down. But still, I went on the scissors a couple of times. I went on the ghost train, which you can't go on that much because if you all know, you know. You wait so long for that ride and it's not even scary. Um, I went on a few rides just over again, but there was one ride that put me off, that put me out, Mm -hmm. and a friend of mine as well. Like I got off it and I felt like 
someone had just given me two bottles of tequila in one go. Uh, I could not believe how I felt after that. It was one of those ones. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, Nina, but it starts off on the floor mm-hmm. and it's a, a circle, right? Ah, those, and you yeah, sit yeah. In it, but you get no seatbelt. You sit in it, you at the front and you at the back and your friend sits at the front. I was at the back and my friend was in front right and then it starts spinning really fast and then as it's spinning it goes up so it starts at the bottom and it goes up up to the top so then you're upside down it spins really fast and it just keeps doing that and it just keeps spinning 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 one way and then it goes up that's like a problem waiting to happen (laughs) many people have vomited every time i've been there there's been an experience of vomit even on the roller coaster that they have it's just Oh, yeah, I'm very I would grateful. Be traumatized. I'm, I'm so grateful that I have never ever felt sick going on yeah. rides or boats mm-hmm. or anything. Like my stomach, even though she's got some ashes, she's a bomb when it comes to that. Nice. So getting off that though, because I closed my eyes and I probably should have not done that, but I couldn't look at the spinning. So I was like, had my eyes really shut. Mm-hmm. We were just screaming. We were screaming. And then when you get off, you're like, is the ground up there or down? I don't, like, you really don't know which is which. And that was my first time trying this too. I have to say this. In all the years I've been to Luna Park, I have absolutely stayed away from that ride. But my friend was like, you have to try it. You have to try it. Come on, come on. And I was at the, I'm in this place now where I say yes to things that I'm afraid of in that way, mm. you know, with boundaries. Mm-hmm. And I said yes to that. And I was like, all right, I'll do it. But then afterwards, my my head was thumping. And I was like, you know what? I definitely feel 27. Yes. But I've never felt like this before. Oh, my gosh. What an experience that was. Yeah. What an experience. But yeah, I did Luna Park last year. And then this year I'm doing something else fun because I choose to. Yes. I can't do just personally, it's sometimes I just don't want to do dinner and I don't want to mm-hmm. do cake. Yeah. That's kind of our thing here, dinner and cake and coffee. Yeah. Dinner, cake and coffee. Dinner and drinking. And Makes it sound so hoppy because it's dinner, cake and coffee. It's just women. That's a disappointing mm-hmm. thing. It's It's a lot of women that do it. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. noticed it as well, but it seems to be every video that is complaining about something that an adult is doing, it's a woman. The skateboarding thing. And then this other woman had a pink house. This other woman had a greenhouse. And it's just women mm-hmm. in the comments. That's disgusting. That's gross. That's You're an adult. Why would you do that? Maybe That's because so we were cute. taught we had to grow up really quickly. Yeah. Why not have a pink Maybe. house or a greenhouse or a blue house? That's cute. I think it's just a lot of projections in a lot of ways of belief systems of what we should be doing, but it just takes away any element of fun. Cause trust me, think about it. If we're in survival mode as adults and we, and everyone talks about bills and mortgage and retro and tax and <sighs> jobs and so on and so forth, what are you leaving anyone to actually enjoy? If you're just going to take everything away by your own opinions and belief systems, constantly projecting it, you shouldn't have a pink house. You shouldn't have a greenhouse. You shouldn't have roller skates. You shouldn't have a skateboard. You're not allowed to buy Barbie dolls and put them on a shelf. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do that. Don't get piercings. Don't get tattoos. Da, 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 blah, 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 explosion. Yeah. That's what it feels like sometimes, honestly. It feels like an explosion when you're hearing all these adults just just opinion, 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 belief, belief, because they've been taught that, hey, the color gray is where you should really follow your life through just this, just follow this, follow this, follow this. And it has to be in a certain manner and you have to be respectful and you have to show up in a certain way. So Ellie, any element of fun is a big no, no. And I have to say this too, and I'm going to supply the biggest proof of that, that I witnessed. I, I said that so like, like vocal. I, I, <laughs> I... <laughs> um, for past birthdays, I've planned, even for other people's birthdays, 
it's been like a games day kind of thing. And not even birthdays. We've had games nights as well. We used to a lot once upon a time in a nursery rhyme. And um, I found games online, but I also created them because I am definitely a lover of fun. So I, I think I saw it online, but I did a game parcel parcel, but I put dares in each wrapping and then you play music and the parcel goes around and when you stop the music, people got to open it and do the dare. And if they don't, then they get, they get punished. (laughs) Maybe punishment meant like a spoon of Vegemite or something like Mm -hmm. that. You know, punishment was probably just Vegemite or mayonnaise and milk. I used to do the most, put together the most horrendous thing sometimes. (laughs) Delicious. (laughs) And, um, there was one birthday, my brother's birthday, where a scavenger hunt was organised and there were teams and the adults. We wanted the adults to get involved, but obviously no force. And um, not everyone, but a lot of people, most most people got involved and I witnessed the people that I never thought I'd witness that with turn into, and it's not a bad thing either, but turn into their inner children And everyone was just running around our house, the front yard, the backyard, inside the house. Everyone was running. They're like, move out the way. They're coming up to us. What have you got? What have you got? Let's just cheat. I know. Go find your own. Like, I'm competitive sometimes. I'm competitive. I'm like, I'm on the hunt. Like, everyone was on the hunt. I stopped for a minute and I looked around and I just thought to myself, like, this is what we're talking about. You know, the people that, walk so sternly through life and not not in fault but have been made to do so because of many many different pathways and issues and situations and stuff the people that have been made to walk through sternly you're witnessing them do what they've actually wanted to do and be what they've actually wanted to be which is have an element of fun within their life and they've been given an opportunity and this is the thing too some people are really uncomfortable with it and you see it too, they're very uncomfortable with fun because they don't want to embarrass themselves or they don't want to seem a certain way or they want to be, it's just a very big insecurity. And I felt this too when I've had fun around people that have really looked at me like you're, or have said to me, you're not a child anymore. Mm-hmm. That's a, I've had that said to me before, you're not a child anymore. Okay, well, let me just be, you know those videos of people sitting at a corporation job and they're just sitting there, folder, folder. Mm-hmm. Boulder. I'll just do that then. Boulder. Boulder. Let's just keep that depression status going. That's not happening. No way. That's really what it sounds like. That's really what it sounds like. People want to continue. And it's just, they say it, but then if the opportunity arises where they can freely, in a safe space, be a child, I've seen it. And it's a beautiful thing to witness. And my team won. So, Hey, I know in that chicken dinner, <laughs> but it was so much fun. It's just, as I said, it was a beautiful thing to witness, and um, we need it. We really need the fun. We really, really need it. Yes, really need it. <laughs> really, seriously. Anyone that says otherwise, let's sit down and have a chat. Yeah. I agree, you know, and it is kind of weird when you think about it, or at least it is to me, because when you're a kid and you look at adults, I'm, I i don't know if you've had that moment, but I definitely did as a kid where I was like, why is everybody so serious and uptight all the time? Mm. I don't want to be like that when I grow up. I'm so excited yeah. to become an adult because then I have the money to do the things that I want to do. And then, of course, you become an adult and you realize life is a little bit different, but still you're able to compart to compartmentalize the things that you wish to do. Why are we not incorporating that at at some level, right? I was just a couple weeks ago, I was talking to a friend of mine and she had started new hobbies and it was like making her life so much better, her self-esteem, the way she was looking at herself. And she's like, I can't believe I didn't do this much earlier. Like what, what did, you know, why was I so caught up in trying to appease to society standards, but now that I'm actually doing this and doing that and I'm creating things, I'm making art, I feel so much more whole. I feel so much more settled in my self and I'm like 
this is the experience that's available for everybody, but not a lot of people think they can because they're at a certain age, quote unquote. And um, it's just not true. Like, go and have fun, start new hobbies. And if you're like me at times, where it's like, well, I don't know what to do. There's so much stuff. Where do I choose? <laughs> Just pick one thing. Just pick one thing and try it out. You'll figure it out along the way. But yeah, fun is so yeah. much, so much importance in life. And you are absolutely the funnest person I know. And you are amazing. Like, if you guys are not watching our YouTube ep episode or channel right now, watching this on our YouTube, um, Ashley has beautiful glowing red hair and this beautiful. I don't even know what it is, but like shirt tee like jacket i don't know what it is but it's stunning it's orange and black and it's like graffiti and it's beautiful and artistic and it just exudes from you the 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 artistry the femininity the strength and the power and the light that is you and your energy and i love that i love that you express yourself through so many different ways because it's you and it feels right and it's something that makes you happy and so to you, Ashley, and to anybody else listening, whatever it is that you wish to do, however it is that you wish to express yourself, please continue to do so because you are the light of this earth. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Universe knows how grateful I am. When I do my gratitude list, it's always, thank you, Fanina. Thank you, Fanina. Thank you, Fanina. Thank you, Fanina. <laughs> Truly, my gratitude list has had Nina on it many times. I manifest, manifest, manifestation list does too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm very, One very appreciative as well. You're just so sweet. An apple pie, sweet. <laughs> apple crumb. <My> apple pie. <laughs> Not the mud pie, the good pie. You're the sweet, so sweet. <laughs> You're the Thank apple you. to the crumble. Ooh, apple crumble pie. Black me feet. It's amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Right when you come here, the desserts, the desserts. Yes. We're going to have our yeah, own version of a party and we're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, I. Just to say this before I wanted to say what I was going to say, the amount of foods that I've told Nina about, but also things that she's, you've already tried. She's already tried some of the Aussie snacks. I've sent her a box and she sent me a box back of um her, what is it, German treats and then yes. Aussie treats and stuff. But when she comes here, there's just plenty more that I've got on list. <laughs> she's going to be like, I'm so full. Oh I'm my God. so excited. I have like five stomachs. I just need the process. Like I need time to process and get into them because they open up like a flower. You know, the more food I eat, the yeah. more I'm able to to eat. So yes, my five stomachs and are and I are awaiting the time I'm in Australia with you. <laughs> I'm gonna say I would actually rather you do it gently, only because I feel like when you save the food. It's mm. so much more like you're really just really taking it in and mm. having that moment. When you have your favorite food, right, there are moments, I don't know if you've done this too, where you want to scoff it down, but then you're like, yeah. no, 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 I need to savor this moment because when it's over, I'm devastated. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what Nina said about as she was kindly complimenting, <laughs> as she always beautifully does, what she was saying about expressing self, it's definitely been a journey of unfolding and especially being 28, I'm more in a mindset that I want to do it a lot more, no matter what Tom, Dick, Harry, Fred and George say, you know, there was a time, Nina, just to say this, where I used to dress up a lot in the versions of people's, you know, connection with dressing up. I used yeah. to put full face of makeup on and I'd put an outfit on anywhere I'd go, whether it's the mm -hmm. shops, whether it's to a friend's house or family, like I would, I would dress up. I wouldn't really mm -hmm. wear, let's say, a lot of tracksuit pants and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like I would, I would put my sort of effort in that I wanted to put in. And I always would hear, why are you so dressed up? Why are you so dressed up? Why are you so dressed up? You know, mm -hmm. why are you so dressed up? And even though in some ways it was because of, not wanting to show face without makeup, even though it had its reasons still, 
I actually enjoyed showcasing sort of a part of myself as very creative in my outfits. I literally, I have to say this, I took a cardigan and I turned it into a top. And I've done this with one of my car- with one of my um tops in my wardrobe. I turned it into a top and I put like a mm-hmm. vest over it for one of my concerts last year that I went mm-hmm. to, right? You take the bottom, you take the bottom and you bring it up and you wrap it around your neck. You do like a cross, mm-hmm. you wrap it around your neck mm-hmm. and you button it at the back. Mm-hmm. Right? And I basically, I turned it into a top. I did that with a cardigan once for a party and it looked bomb. The yeah. top was like off the shoulder and then you just had the cross up top and I dyed it and you couldn't see the tie because my hair was down. Nice. And it looked bomb and I had a peplum skirt on. I remember this like it was yesterday. I just, I got creative. Like I turned <laughs> my heels once into sock heels. You know when they became a thing, the heels, Ooh, the sock heels yeah. thing? Yeah. I did I did that once for my I think it was my 21st birthday I went out with some friends for dinner and I turned mm-hmm. my heels into that mm-hmm. like I got creative with my outfits mm-hmm. as time has gone on I wanted to really be able to do that a lot more and I have been able to but it's just navigating what society how society allows you to be in those spaces mm-hmm. is really what I had to work through it's how society makes me feel is it safe to do so? You know, how will I feel showing up as myself? How will I be treated? Because yeah. you, you still see it this day. Some people just, they're so unsafe for other people, mm-hmm. for them showing up in the space that they want to show up in. You know, do anything but the norm. You know, yeah. look anything else but what they consider to be the norm. Like if I had a coloured house, colour my house and, oh, my gosh, you have so many people just projecting, you know. If I walked out like this, yeah, people would probably look. I don't know what they'd be thinking, but they'd probably look and they'd probably think, oh, my gosh, like it's just too much. It's just too much. I've done pattern over pattern before, right? Yes. Because I knew, I knew that people would say it's too much. But you know what? I like getting creative with my clothing. I have always truly liked it, but I was afraid to show it. But now here I am. This is actually me. This is me. Red hair is me. Like right now, and I'm just realizing this too, this is fully me. Red hair has always been my thing, having red hair and then different outfits, like crazy out there outfits. I love it. I live for it. Give me it any day. It's literally a top. It's a top. And then this is a blazer nice. in the same um, the same pattern. I love yeah. it. I love your style anyway. I just I like matching every- pants. Yes. Oh my gosh, that would be everything. That it. would be a spiritual experience. Yes. <laughs> no. Oh, but- Nina, the day that I can walk out there and just walk down the street. Like I've seen someone TikTok do and you just, you just in your space and you're secure in your bubble. Yeah. That's what I'm working towards. I just want to walk mm-hmm. out and I don't care if Larry and Heidi and SpongeBob and Bob the Builder look and I don't care what they create, the narrative they create in their own minds because it's theirs, it's not mine. Yeah. I just want to walk through it and not absorb it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And that's what I'm working towards because the energy, yeah. I can feel energy really I can feel energy. I'm very sensitive to it. And I've definitely felt where I'm not wanted. Mm-hmm. I've definitely felt where it's not safe, especially when I've walked into certain places, environments. So if you're looking at me and you're staring and the intention doesn't feel good of what you're giving, then I'll know. I know what you're giving. It doesn't take a lot to know. But then there's also the reality too that sometimes your mind can create it. So it is sort of figuring out what's what. But nonetheless, I think it's so important to be self and to really, you don't, how do I say it? You can't control everyone else's narrative that they create. You can't control what they decide to do and say, even though you can speak against it, but you can't control how they all look at you. But you can, hmm, you can control how you feel about it. You can control how you walk out there and be and how secure you are in self. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just focusing on myself because I can't 
change society. I can't go out there and tell everyone, stop looking at me. Stop looking at me. Stop. Stop with your negative. <laughs> Sorry, can't swear. Stop with your negative crap. I can't do that. <laughs> and I don't want to. It's such a waste of energy. So I'd rather keep growing in self where I need to and building my secure space enough that I can just block out the outside noise because I know it's not mine. Be in my space and be content in that space because I'm who I want to be and I'm wearing what I want to wear and kumbaya to anyone who has any kind of other opinion about it. I'll sing kumbaya with them. Let's hold hands. Kumbaya, my lord. <laughs> No, but I completely agree with everything that you said, Ash. Truly, I think life is about self-expression and making sure that you're expressing yourself in the way that you want to and appear in the way that you want to. And the fact that you're growing into that, and the fact Ooh. that you are becoming more comfortable with that, I'm so, so proud of you. It's just give another round of applause for Ashley. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect Upper in the back is also celebrating yeah you cheer on yeah. you beautiful thing <laughs> <laughs> just it's such a joy i think to get to know you more and more as we grow into adulthood and into ourselves and learn how to re-inhabit child self along the way mm -hmm. and i just i'm oh, enjoying yeah. every step of the way so thank you for sharing your life and your time with me, Ashley. You are amazing. And again, happy, happy birthday. I hope you have the most incredible 28th year for your life, one that is filled with healing, with love, with respect, with compassion, good new energy, good new things in general, just a lot of mm. pew pew, just a lot of good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my friend, as always. Thank you she's just she's just the light she's just the sweetest she's the sun she said i'm the sun we're just gonna keep going back and forth i've even forgotten the words that i actually searched in the dictionary that i've got on my phone i've forgotten voracious. the words completely voracious S was it sagacious something with a... made sagacious voracious yeah. <laughs> contrition is the only one i fully remember yes contrition oh my goodness. she has a lot of contrition. contrition you have a lot of contrition a lot so do you so do you you have body, like a ton of like, contrition you have like a full worldwide <laughs> you're like a mrs world, worldwide you contrition. have the entire universe you have the entire universe of contrition <laughs> okay <laughs> thank yeah. you see again your contrition goes to like another a galaxy and the multiverses so What can I say? What can I say after that? Because <laughs> I don't know what's after that. <laughs> the afterlife. <laughs> oh yeah, the afterlife then. The fourth and fifth dimension. Oh, All the dimensions in one. Yeah, I I truly honor. Even throughout all the dimensions that we in the multiverses, just how much time and effort you put into expressing yourself and expressing all the levels and all the uh, archetypes within our souls and within ourselves. And the fact that we can even have these conversations in the first place is such a blessing to me. So to your child self, to your teenage self, to yourself as you are and into the woman you are becoming, I wish you the best, best, best birthday and time of your life, Ashley, because you deserve it, truly. That's so nice. You dedicated it to child self and teenage self as well because they're a part of the equation. That's so nice. That's so nice. It's so warm. <laughs> Honestly, you know, you just reminded me. Last year I put a post. You all might have seen it actually on um. How do you say her name? Yeah, Janae Iko actually posted this first. That's where I got it from. She posted a tribute to her inner child for her birthday last year. And then when I saw it, because I think she's a couple of weeks before me, or maybe not even actually, because she just, I just actually saw, no, I think she's like two weeks before my birthday, sorry. Um, she's a Pisces. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think she is 
yeah two weeks or something before yeah anyway she posted it and I saw it and I thought that would actually be a really good idea because the inner child healing is kind of the topic that was currently unfolding last year a lot of it and I thought I think a dedication to that might be important so I did it and it was really just such a an adding to the healing, honoring your inner child and giving that happy birthday of turning 27 to them for many, many, many reasons. But it's just an element of you showing them love because they need you to show them love as well as your adult self, especially if they've ever missed out on things that they didn't get when they were that age. You know, you're at an age where you could potentially, where you could potentially give that to them and it really does help with the healing journey so this year I'm going to be dedicating it to my teenage self I think out of out of us three the teenage one definitely needs it the most to be honest because we were talking about you know as a child birthdays they they weren't they were nothing compared to being older you know getting older was a completely different environment to celebrating it as a child Mm -hmm. so this year I'm going to be dedicating this birthday to my teenage self and uh, honoring them honoring them in every way possible because essentially they got me here they're the reason that I'm here and they keep pushing for me to continue on this healing journey every healing that I go to they're there because they need healing too but it's just a massive hug and it's a massive appreciation for being in this place and being at this point of such strength you know because they no one could speak for them and no one spoke up for them and no one was I can feel it (laughs) no one heard or uh, da 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 no one heard and saw and validated them like I'm doing now and I feel like for any of you too this is not just for me this is directed for you as well as it is for Nina too you know they are the ones that were pushed through the worst of the worst in a lot of ways so they deserve our love and they deserve our honor and they deserve for you to sit there and say I've got this you know that's kind of where I'm at right now and that's also why I'm dedicating a birthday to her to say it's okay you know I know what it was like, but not it's not going to be like that anymore. I've got this. You can rest. You can rest. That was a massive leap in healing and building that foundation of honoring self. It really is the whole factor of honoring self. It pushed me forward in such a way. It really did. And I'm saying this, and I know it can be different for everyone, but at the same time, it's just guidance and do with it as you please. But if there's one thing I know is that every part of you, your child self and your teenage self definitely needs you to acknowledge them. No matter if you didn't go through certain traumas in that time, it's still them that also feels what you feel. They're still a part of you. They didn't leave. They're still a part of you. That's why, you know, we still love certain things that we loved as children. They're still there, you know. So I definitely am dedicating these this birthday to her and so on and so forth from there. I'll just keep honouring the years as they go by because when I'm 40 years old, I definitely want to honour the 28-year-old and the 25-year-old and just honour what I did in my 20s, you know, and just keep pushing that forward until the day that I depart from this planet and keep honouring. Honouring is, I feel like, the biggest self-love in my in my opinion at least it's beautiful that is so beautiful and it definitely hit me when you say you you can rest now you can rest oh geez i was yeah sorry go no it's beautiful absolutely stunning and it definitely hit me when you said that because i was just i've been wanting to reply it's like let's bring her into the room let's bring her into the room give her all a group hug you know but when you said that it was just so It resonated with me personally and my teenage self because, like you said, that was the time when things, at least in my life as well, hit the hardest and we had to navigate Mm. through a lot of darkness and a lot of 
confliction and just a lot of things. And so to be able to be where you're at now and say, it's not going to happen anymore. I'm going to take care of you. We're going to be okay. That is such a beautiful thing. And I really want you to be proud of that. I want teenage you to be proud of how far she's gotten because she's amazing. And I love her. I love her too. (laughs) When I get readings done and they, and they come up, there's, there's always kind of that acknowledgement of how that they're feeling safer and safer more and more as I'm healing. And that is such a compliment to know I'm doing the right thing and bringing safety to them because I want them to rest. I want them to just be, you know, and to stay with me, you know, but also just they don't need to be in survival mode. They don't need to feel like they have to protect. They don't have to keep fighting, you know, and putting up the walls and the shields. Like I've can't, I've got this. It's all good. Yeah. As the adult that is that knows what she's she's doing, you know, even when she doesn't feel like she does, I've got this. So yeah. yeah. It's and such a surreal alone. thing to say, honestly. You're not alone. We're all here celebrating with you. <laughs> <sighs> Even that in itself, it's just, it's such a, I just can't even begin to describe the surrealness of of it all. Honestly, I really just can't. I can't even begin to put it in words sometimes what it is to feel loved and what it is to, because like I just, it's not just me, it's, it's them as well that feels love, that feels that love. So you're not just being impacted by your current self, you're feeling the emotions of all of, of, of them as well. You're feeling the emotions from them. It's kind of like in healing. You're not just healing your stuff now. You're healing from everything they went through too. It's three different areas yeah. of life that you've got to heal from. So it's, it's just, yeah, I just cannot believe it. I don't think they can either to be where I am today is, I, I can't even, I can't find the words right now of how major this is for me just how big this is. I can feel it coming again. I can't put it in words, honestly. Even to be here at, at 28, you hear people that have experienced, um, you hear stories from people that have experienced really heinous thoughts and mindsets. I don't even know if I can say the word. Um And they always say that they can't believe they made it to a certain age. And I truly can't put it in words and say enough that I cannot really settle on the reality that I am at, that I'm turned, that I've turned 28, you know, that I'm 28 years old and I'm in a position where I actually can see life as life and not just existing and not just surviving, just actually wow, I, I, I can see Nina as who she is and I can actually accept what she's giving to me and what she's putting in my space. I can actually feel that, you know, and I'm not scared of it anymore and I'm not afraid and it's just a whole, it's a completely different reality for me, me now. But for them too, it was, this was not a reality. Life was so different, so... Yeah, it's a lot to find groundedness in. That's why I will. That's why I said at the start that I'm going to be so emotional through any process that comes into my life because I've never experienced that these feelings towards that before, or I've never experienced that environment before. It's a lot to take in, and it's a lot to see if you can find safety in it or see if you can trust it or see if it's actually going to last. You know, there's just a lot you've got to process through when new and exciting good spaces come into your life. But I'm grateful nonetheless. And I'm grateful to have you here with me as well. And I'm sure the world is much better off and much more grateful with you in it than without. So thank you for joining us on this experience 
of life called ARP <laughs> and human being and being human. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> and yes. Thank you for saying that. Of course. So as we are celebrating today, Ashley's birthday, and to anybody out there who's listening, who has their birthday come up or who has just had their birthday passed, um, wherever you're at in life and whatever it is you're celebrating, just take time to really honor how far you've come and you've done a great thing. Ashley, you've done a great thing. You've done a fantastic thing. And um, yes, we're all very much honored to have you here and to receive you. And I'm honored to be here and receive you, Ashley. And um, yeah, that's going to be it for this week or this weekend, wherever you're listening from. I hope you have a great day, evening and night. And uh, thank you for joining us. <laughs> yes. Happy birthday to all of those that had it on the 30th as well. And happy birthday if your birthday is today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy, happy birthday. So sing, celebrate, good time. Come on. Come on. Let's celebrate. It's a party going on right here. <laughs> not doing the not bush and the macarena. I like it. I don't even know the words. <laughs> Do the ketchup song. Yeah. I said it. Hey, 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 <laughs> oh my gosh what fun that's a dedication to any of you that have your birthdays today yes the 30th as well yesterday who knows when just happy birthday to you all you're a treasure and thank you for joining us yes thank you guys for joining in and we will catch you next weekend see you then bye bye, bye.